What is going on YouTube, you and the tube? We're going to talk about what you need to know before you get on your train or truck. Sure using extra hand. Do it. Nothing in particular, and I'm doing it all day long. A hot grill and a cooler of beer and a CD of my favorite song. A lot of nothing in particular, and I do it well. All right. So congratulations, you have completed your training, well, at least the school part of it. You went to the DMV, or at the school, or MPV, wherever, most of I know it's different in every state, they, what they call their damn shit, but you passed, you got your CDL, you're ready to become a truck driver. First and foremost, the first thing you need to understand Probably 98% of the shit you just learned in school, pre-trip, how to go backwards and forwards, how to offset, how to parallel park, all that shit you could throw right out the window. Because you're about ready to step into the real world. And I hope that if you're a trainer, please explain this to your students, that they are getting ready to step into the real world. What they've learned in school is does not transpire out or transpire. It's probably the wrong word, but we'll use it anyway. Transpire into the real world. There is real world driving a truck, and there is school driving a truck. Uh, I have been out of school now for a little over almost a year and a half, and I can't do that 90/90 backing crap anymore. Can I back this truck up? Hell yeah! It's one of my most favorite things to do. And um, so, I just got a text message so messing me up. But anyway, so you have the school shit you learn, and you have the real world stuff. So please don't annoy your trainer. I've had students get in my truck and I explain this to them very carefully. There's real world, and then there's school. And they go, well in the school, we didn't do And I'm like, yeah, shut the fuck up, we're in the real world. So that's first and foremost. There's the shit you learned at school. When you go to do your upgrade, you'll have to do that 90-90 alley dog shit. But then there's real world where you gotta go, what the fuck, how am I supposed to get this trailer in there? It's your job. That's what we do. So, let's go on from there. Let's talk about getting along with your trainer. I have personally dropped off probably four or five, maybe six students. I let everybody know very clearly, I am not here to argue with you. I am not here to fight with you. Understand, you know, apprentices, the students, whatever you want to call yourself, you are getting in that trainer's truck. That's his truck. That's his home. That's where he spends, he spends more time in that truck than he does at his own house that he pays for, or apartment, or whatever it is he's doing. Now, I am not setting trainers up on a pedestal that we're the greatest thing since sliced bread, because there are some shitty, f ooh, almost F-bomb. Oh, wait, <coughs> fucking trainers in this company. I had one. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know. You'll see the video when I got off this truck, all this other shit. He used me as a 40 hour, or I mean a 70 hour uh, DOT clock. He wanted me to drive straight. He did all the macros, he did all the backing, he did all that shit. He just basically used me like a mule. So I know I spend time to train my students. I spend time with them when we sit at the shipper for an extra 20 minutes while they figure out, you know, what's wrong? Why, why are we not moving forward? That's 20 minutes we can make it down the road. That's 20 miles. 20 miles times 30 cents. Well, in my case, 32 cents a mile. 32, that's a lot of money to, to waste and sit around. And understand that. So when your trainer is spending time with you to teach you something, understand that's money out of his pocket. He's not getting paid to teach you how to do macros or send the correct macros or to make sure you did your clock right. Make sure when you got out the truck, you put yourself on duty fueling or on duty checking in and 
and not wasting your drive out. You know, you got a truck, oh, just leave it on drive. You go in there, you and that's time. Because when you get out of phase two, or when you get into phase two and out of phase one, you're not getting paid to fuel. You're not getting, there's that minimum wage shit right out the window. Only, mon only money you make is the money that you get by making these wheels turn. These wheels are not turning, you're not getting paid. So when you go to a scale house, that's why it's important to learn scaling. When you go to the scale house and you gotta get your scales right, you spend six hours getting your scale and getting your weights right, that's unpaid time. So you're gonna to wanna to spend time, get out there with your with your trainer when he's doing the even let's say your trainer doesn't want to teach you how to do how to do your, your weights. Okay, fuck him. Get out and watch him yourself. See what he's doing. Try to learn. Watch YouTube videos. Do I mean obviously you're watching YouTube videos, you're watching one now. So get out there and learn as much as you can because when you if you waste two hours getting your weights right, that's two hours of unpaid money. That's 120 miles. 124 miles to be exact, but that's a lot of money that's not going in your paycheck, that's coming out of your time. You know, you may be off off your uh, 11 hour clock, but you're still running on your 14. So if you waste two hours, now you only have 12 hours to get 11 hours done of driving. Let's say if it takes you four hours, now you got 10 hours to get 11 hours of driving done. That's money coming out of your pocket. And I don't know about all y'all out there. I know everybody got into trucking for whatever reason they got into it. Like, oh, I want to drive a truck, which is perfectly fine. It just wasn't my reason while, why I got in, which will be my next follow-up video, so stay tuned. You, I, I know I'm in this truck to make money. And with that being said, I also want to train my students. I'm not here to, to just use them as a time clock use them to make me have big ass checks because they just move, move, run, run. No, I'm gonna train them the same way because I want them to learn. I already, I've been doing this long enough, I know how my checks are gonna go. I know they're shitty at the beginning when I get a new student and they get progressively better because the student gets progressively better. And, you know, I know when the student completes me and get off, gets off my truck, not me putting them off, that they're gonna be safe going forward. So that's it, so basically, don't, don't argue with your trainer. If your trainer's an asshole, suck it up. You're only with them for like three to four weeks. That's a very short time. Very, very short time. I mean, so, and if your trainer's awesome, that's cool. If your trainer's way too awesome and doesn't teach you shit and tries to be your buddy, that's not teaching you anything. That's not gonna make you become a good driver. This is serious shit out on these roads driving these trucks. This isn't the school going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, then go offset, now I'm gonna parallel. You go, oh, the bell runs, let's go back to the hotel room and sit there and have lunch and laugh and joke with my friends. This is not it is. I mean, we're, we just hit eight minutes on this video. I'm gonna cut this up real quick. So, be prepared. Like, go ahead and hit the like button, hit, hit the uh, subscribe button if you already have it. If you already have, that's awesome, thank you very much. Um, you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. I mean, I'd be more than happy to answer the questions. A lot of times I have people, I'll give them my number and they just call me and we bullshit, uh, you know, about what's gonna happen next. Be prepared. What you're getting ready to go into next is some serious shit. Don't forget, you have your life in your hands, you have your trainer's life in your hands. I have two students, so there's another life back there that's in your hands. That person back there is sleeping. They have, they can't stop anything from happening. They're trusting you as a driver. This is a bumpy ass section. But, um, and then you have general public's life in your hands. So this is some very shit, serious shit. Take it serious. Don't think you know everything. Learn what you can from your, from your trainer. And like I said, not all trainers are great, but there are some really good trainers out there. I mean, I've met some, you know, talking in the schools and stuff, you know, talking to other trainers. And there are some really damn good trainers. And it is hard to be a good trainer when you're dealing with with students that think they know everything, that want to argue, that want to argue and want to fight with you and all this other stuff. You get to the point where you know, like, you know what, fuck it. You just drive forward and I'll make my money and then you go do what you, whatever else you got to do with it in, in uh, your own truck. And it's tough not to think that way. It is super tough. Because I know I got into training because I want to be a trainer. I want to train. So 
So, like I said, like and subscribe. Throw a uh, throw your throw your comments at the bottom. If you got any questions? Get a hold of me. And like I always say, keep that left door closed, right foot down, only when it's safe. Make those miles, guys. Nothing in particular, and I do it well.